I'm Deborah, and I'm known to some of you here today. And I'm actually here on staff at Ilri as an instructional designer. Now, when I give my card to people, they have a look at the card and they say, oh yeah, okay, hi Deborah, and uh, what's an instructional design? So, now let's just imagine, um, since I did work with the Ibli group for some time, let's just imagine that someone from Ibli asked me this question in the early days. So I say, okay, well listen, you've got some sales agents and they don't know anything about microinsurance, but they've got to go out and they've got to be able to tell people, pastoralists, who maybe don't even know about insurance, about microinsurance, about index-based insurance. They've got to be able to explain concepts like satellites and how data comes from satellites. They've got to be able to convince these people that all this is real and that they should actually pay real money every, every year just in case something bad happens, then you know there will be money paid back to them. So on faith, they're going to pay this money, this premium, uh, and they are expecting to get a payout. So this is the role of your sales agents. So now I'm an instructional designer. So what I'm proposing to do is I'm proposing to lock all these people in a room for about a week and lecture at them until it gets into their head, okay? So how long do you think I would have had the job? <laughs> so this is not instructional design. Okay, instructional design Instructional design um, basically takes us from looking at, okay, what is the job? We have the sales agents, we know what they're supposed to do, and what's the current status quo? The current status quo is, okay, so maybe they've sold insurance, but not necessarily index-based insurance. You have pastoralists who maybe know a little bit about insurance, but probably don't, and certainly don't understand the concepts around microinsurance and the indexed based model of microinsurance. And um, you have some logical and practical constraints. I mean, this is in northern Kenya, this is in southern Ethiopia, There's, there are remote clients here. You have to travel a long distance. Your sales agents won't necessarily have phone connections even, to be able to call in and find out, oh, someone's asked me a difficult question, I can't answer it, what's, what's, what should I tell them? So there are, that's the analysis side of things. So we follow a model, basically this model, ADDIE. So A-D-D-I-E, this is analysis, design, development, implementation, evaluation. So the analysis is, let's look at the situation, where do we start from? And then let's design some learning activities. Some, let's design the learning pathway that takes them from this point to the point where they can actually go out and sell the product to pastoralists, reassure them, answer all their questions, be knowledgeable, make this real for the pastoralist. Okay? So we have point A, we have point B, and simple matter of just designing how to get there. So, lock them in the room, lecture at them for five days. No, we don't do that. And what I'm going to do in this talk is I'm going to go through the steps of the ADI model with one particular product that has been developed by the Capacity Development Unit for FEAST. So, FEAST is the feed assessment tool. Feed assessment tool, FEAST, it's a systemic way, systematic way of going out into a community and saying, okay, now obviously you need to maximize the productivity of your livestock, uh, you have certain resources at your disposal, you have a certain amount of fodder that you already produce, maybe you can produce more, maybe there are certain varieties that might grow better here. Um, let's have a look at the community, their capabilities, and actually talk to them about what the situation is and how the, the research organization can help them. 
So this is, this is the, um, the step away from the old model where you go out and you say, OK, got this wonderful technology, just use this, all your problems will be solved. This is the agricultural um, innovation systems approach. So FEAST, in the analysis stage, what we basically had for FEAST were people like Alan Duncan, whom I'm sure you all know, uh, here in Ethiopia, and Ben Lakuyu down in Kenya, running around various countries to run these workshops personally. So this, of course, is important because donors are pushing ILRI to be able to prove uh, approaches, toolboxes such as FEAST on a larger scale. Okay, they don't, I mean, it's not enough to show us that it worked with one community. We want to see if it works with a range of communities. We want actual proof. But scientists have to make sure that they uphold the level and the quality of research at Ilri. I mean, that's basically what Ilri is about. So uh, taking these people out of their jobs and taking them to run workshops is a big time commitment. What capacity development did was said, OK, Alan and Ben, how about you become the subject matter experts? We'll try and get into your head. We'll look at your learning materials. We'll come out and observe workshops. We'll see how you manage to train other researchers to be able to go out to communities and run the FEAST approach. And if we can document this, if we can prepare learning materials, if we can prepare learning activities, that are good enough to be able to support someone who isn't Alan or Ben, who doesn't have their breadth of experience perhaps, but with that support they can present a course to the same level or a similar level of quality. So, the actual FEAST toolkit they, the feast, um, when you go out to the community, what you do is you um, select people to participate in a focus group discussion. And in that focus group discussion, uh, you talk about the, all the various aspects that contribute to livestock productivity and fodder availability. The data that you get from that focus group discussion, you put into a software application and you um, then that sort of steps you through. The software application produces graphs and the graphs sort of lead you towards an analysis. So what can we do to help? Okay, so the software application, capacity development worked with the scientists to improve that software application so it was a little easier for people to understand. And the focus group discussions for the focus group discussions, they produced an interview guideline so that someone who was new perhaps to running these focus groups would be able to do it the same way that everyone else had done. Um, a checklist for workshops. What do you have to do a day before? What do you have to do four weeks before? What do you have to do two months before to make sure that this intervention is going to work? Uh, and then produced also e-learning modules. So what I'm going to do today is take you through some examples of these e-learning modules. So you can see there are a series of videos that show you how to use the software and um, other videos that actually paint the background and explain why you do things and why you do them the way that it has been suggested. And we also of course, analysed, because we we're fortunate enough that Alan and Ben had been running these things for a long time, we were able to analyse where, where were the pain points, where people didn't understand things. So uh, where there were things like the sampling strategy. You go into a community <coughs> sorry, and you invite people to come in for a focus group. It's no use inviting just the, the five men that you meet down the street. That's not going to be representative of the community. You have to have women, you have to have men, you have to have large 
um, holding farmers, you have to have people who are, only have a hectare of, of land to work on, in order to be able to know that the solution you're providing is a solution for the whole community. That was difficult for people, sampling, so the, um, the designers actually developed a game to help them with that. This is uh, the, what it looks like, what the um, feast online e-learning materials look like on the LMS. We have the um, feast modules on the learning management system LMS. Learning.ilri.org. Uh, we have to remember this, learning.ilri.org, because that's the Ilri LMS. So if any of you are interested in putting up e-learning courses, this is available for you. This is not just for captive. We, this is something that we hope that people from all over Iri and other CG partners will want to do. So let's have a look in more detail at what's on our LMS. So on the right hand side you can see the feast and we've uh, zoomed out a bit so that you can see all of the modules that are part of this e-learning course for FEAST. FEAST stands for? Feed assessment tool, right, one correct answer over here. So, you see, interactive learning works good, works well. Okay, so you have your feed assessment tool, you have your e-learning modules, and on the left-hand side you can see one of the videos. So we have a series of short, very short videos that people watch and come to grips with the material. At the end of a series of these very short videos, you'll have some quiz questions so that people will be able to understand for themselves, did I actually comprehend that material? Am I remembering it? Will I be able to use this when I go out to the field? So it's, it's feedback for the user. And of course, it's also feedback for us because it's on an LMS. So we can have a look at what you answered for the quiz questions. Did you all get zero out of 10? In which case we'd better panic and go back out and organize another workshop for you. So the LMS has the advantage that we get information, very fine granular information you know, what did Shafero answer to that question? So, what score did Abdullah get for this course? If he got zero, we assume that he was um, playing computer games at the same time. So, we would want to do something about contacting Abdullah's supervisor. Right, so, here we have one of the videos as an example. the major activities in a farmer-centered diagnosis, explain the importance of involving farmers in the process, describe your role as a FEAST facilitator, summarize how the feed assessment tool is employed in a farmer-centered diagnosis. During this course, we will introduce many new concepts and unfamiliar terms. To help, we will define key terms at the beginning of each lesson. Do not worry if these terms don't make sense at first. We will discuss each of them in detail shortly. Key terms for this lesson include farmer-centered diagnosis. Okay, so that's an example. As you can see, this is a very structured way of learning. So terminology is defined, the objectives are outlined, people know what to expect, and the course proceeds in a very structured format. Now, as I said, there are also, some concepts that people know, that the scientists know from their experience in the field, that people have problems with. So for those sorts of things, the designers actually worked on some interactive activities to give people a chance to try things out in practice while it wasn't really critical. They weren't actually in the field, they weren't going to mis make a mistake with a community. So. This is um, an example where it gives you an introduction. 
This is a community. Next. And the activity is to select eight farmers from a community where there are only 17 people. Of course, it's going to be more complex, but as we said, this is a simulation. And previous. Um, the, the variables that are likely to influence the outcomes or what we hear in the focus group discussion are gender, ethnicity, farm size, and location. So we have to bear those in mind. Next. And in the community that we're facing, we're told that there are three ethnic groups, the red tribe, the blue tribe, and the gold tribe. There are slightly more women than men, and they raise cattle, goats, and chickens. Next. So what the activity is, um, you will actually see, actually, if we go next, here's your community, here's your 17 people. If we click on one of these people, we will see something about them. We'll see that they're from the blue tribe because the figure is blue. Here's some information about them. And if you select, if you click the select button, then they will become part of your sample. And the idea is that Abdullah is going to go through here and he's going to select the seven people. And he's going to do it at random. So you can see in the intro, it's actually giving you enough information to be able to, I'm sorry, it's eight people, Abdullah, keep going. Um, it's going to give you enough information about, I've got a small holding or I've got a large holding. I'm from a gold tribe. I'm from the red tribe. I'm female, I'm male. And then once you've made your selection, of course, you, can, you don't have to do this um, as he's doing it. If you think you've made a mistake, you could just click on one, it would go back and you could choose somebody else to be part of your sample. You then submit your selection and it says, oh dear, in terms of ethnic groups and farm size, you, your sample was completely biased and you're not going to have a productive focus group discussion. Okay, so this is a nice way to go through and learn a skill. And of course, if you're not doing this in front of an entire workshop, it's a lot less embarrassing. You can do it at home and you can do it multiple times. So let's go on. Sorry, we have to go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, I also mentioned that there, was, there were videos that told you how to use the software and we'll just have a brief look at one of those because I'm running out of time. Abdullah. After installing and registering the Feast data application, the first thing you will see upon launching the program is the home menu. You may select from the following options. Enter data, view reports, statistics and units of measurement, printable data collection forms, import export data, user manual, exit, and edit info. Before we delve into the main features of the application, Okay, so that was a very short intro, but I'm sure you've all used thousands of these things on YouTube, so you know what a software application video tutorial looks like. Um, this is something you might not have seen. This is a whiteboard animation, and Ido mentioned these on the first day. All over the world, smallholder farmers often struggle to provide enough quality feed for their livestock. That's why our scientists created a set of electronic forms known as the Feed Assessment Tool, or FEAST, to help development workers collect and analyse data about local feed resources, then identify promising interventions to improve farmers' access to quality feed. The designers packed FEAST with powerful reports and utilities for calculating the composition of livestock feed, nutritional content of animals' diets, herd composition, farmers' household income. So a whiteboard animation is a very good way to introduce a topic. Uh, it gives a, a rapid synopsis of a topic. If you can put that on a website, of course, people might be interested in going to your LMS. So uh, now I'm asking questions here in an interactive format, of course, in an e-learning course, we can't do that. But we have a number of quiz questions, a number of different formats for quiz questions that we can ask. And you can see here that this is a format where you actually have to join um, match from left to right. Match the products with the, um, the amount of money that you can get out of those. 
Here's another format where you get to choose the word that completes the sentence. So there are approximately 500 what, and you can select from billion, thousand, or million. Are there approximately 500 billion smallholder farmers responsible for feeding? Let's have a look. If you click right in the middle, Abdullah. And we chose the wrong answer for one of those, and in the question, or the quiz question actually tells you, okay, well, you got it partially right, but actually the, the full answer is this. So this is, this is the way that you use quiz questions actually as a learning tool. So it's not just saying, yes, you got it right, or, or no, you got it wrong, which is motivational, um, but it's also telling you why you did or you didn't get it right or wrong. So it's also using quiz questions as a learning tool. And I almost out of time. Okay, so I'll skip through this. And I just want to introduce this little device, which Tigist is going to, to show around to you. It's the device that, of course, we mentioned, or Ido mentioned on the first day, because not all of our people have access to the online LMS. But we would still like to know have they understood the materials? Did they do well on the quiz? Did they find it interesting enough to complete the modules? Of course, um, as the framework, sorry, as the framework for CapDev shows you, it's very important to us to actually do research on capacity development and to monitor and evaluate. So we want to know how well the materials are working. And of course, if we're working with you and we're working on developing a course with you in the future, you will also want to know how well people did with your, with your course. Are they really understanding it or not? Are they um, getting the quiz questions right? Which ones aren't they getting right? So the offline player that Tigas is showing you all here um, and pictured on the screen is a solution to that where people can do the course, they can watch all those videos, they can do those interactive activities, they can do those quiz questions that you saw previously, uh, and then when they sync with the server, we can get all the results. So, thank you very much.